All right, here we go again. We've got it dropped on the ground now, and I've got the EPS module hooked up to the uh, 12 volt battery bank. Um, got a little 2 energy watt meter on here, and fortunately, it's uh, the shunt seems to be a bit on the fritz at the moment, but we can see we've got about 12 volts going into it. Let me come along here. I've got the little uh, clamp meter hooked up, so you can measure what's going on on the ground return line. Uh, at the moment it's just powered off, um, the ignition, the little ignition switch is uh, turned off and it's just connected directly to the battery and it's, it's not really drawing any current. I mean this thing's got an error of a couple hundred milliamps so it's not the greatest thing in the world but it's not really drawing any meaningful power when it's on idle. Um, try and turn the wheel, it's uh, pretty tough going. Now let's uh, bring the little ignition switch online. And you see it's clicked on. Uh, it's not really drawing any current at the moment. Uh, Alright, we start to sort of wiggle the wheel a bit. You can see now it's sort of woke up. It's pulling a bit of current. And it's significantly easier to turn. Quite easy to do it with one hand. Here it's deadly quiet. Alright, just shifted the uh, clamp meter around so you can get a better idea of the amount of current consumption. Uh, okay, I'm turning it full lock to the right. Now it's cranking it hard against the end. It's about 15 amps it's holding. Let me back it off the other direction. And yeah, that's it. It seems to work pretty good. And there's absolutely nothing special that was done to this unit to make it work. There's not even a taco signal or speed signal going in. This particular module is actually an ABS unit. Um, so contrary to what people think, you don't actually need to get a non-ABS one for it to function. You just lose the, uh, the dynamic speed and loading feature, which can actually be implemented uh, via other means.